Hello, I'm uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm a part-time professor at the University of Ottawa, uh, teaching meteorology and climatology. And um, my research is on abrupt climate change in the past and present. So I'm looking at very rapid changes in the climate system in the past and trying to relate the changes that we're seeing today uh, with these past changes. So what I've got here on these screens, and I'll zoom in for you um, shortly, is I've got a seven-day um, GFS model, global forecast model, starting today, December 17th, running until December 24th. And I'm looking at temperature anomalies at jet streams and the temperature in the northern hemisphere, and I'm also looking at the southern hemisphere. So I'll get to that in a minute. So. If you followed my blogs and posts and things, um, basically we've, we've, we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. Um, CO2 levels are at least 40% higher. They were pushing 400 uh, parts per million in the uh, northern hemisphere. Um, and uh, during the, uh, for the last million years, they've been in a tight range of about 180 to 280 parts per million. So fossil fuel combustion and land use change has rocketed these levels up, and CO2 is a very strong, active infrared gas. So solar energy comes and heats the earth, and the earth is heating up, and that heat radiates out. Um, and it's trapped by the higher greenhouse gases. Now, the, the temperature change on the Earth, global average temperatures have increased about 0 0.8 degrees since the um, pre-industrial revolution, the start of the industrial revolution. Um, but that's not a, not a uniform change. Uh, it has a very strong latitudinal dependence and also a land-ocean dependence. So that's a global average. Land temperatures have increased much more, more like one and a half degrees, and ocean temperatures um, less than the average. But as you move north and as you move south, the temperature um, increases greater. And what's causing that is you've got all this snow um, on the terrestrial land masses in the northern hemisphere, and you've got the sea ice. Um, and uh, those are white surfaces, highly reflective. They reflect 80% or more of the incoming solar radiation, so that keeps those areas cool. But as the temperature is warming from the rising greenhouse gases, we're getting a lot of melting of the we're getting a lot of melting of the snow and ice. So the, in fact, uh, in the satellite era since about 1979 or so, um, we're getting on average a reduction of about 18% in the snow cover area on land in the early early uh, spring and or early summer, May May June sort of thing, uh, a, a decrease of 18% per decade on average. The sea ice um, ex extent has decreased on average about 12% per decade. And in fact, if you look at the sea ice volume, it's dropped off 80% in the satellite area. So a huge amount. So it's going and it's going very quickly. In fact, both of those parameters are falling exponentially. And as they fall, the methane is coming up. The ocean is warming underneath the ice and in the Arctic Ocean. And it's, um, it's um, melting the, um, it's, it's thawing out the permafrost, both on on the land from the higher temperatures, but also the ocean temperature is warming up and the permafrost is thawing, especially on the vast East Siberian Arctic shelf. Um, we're seeing rates uh, increasing significantly, and we're measuring those on ground stations and also in satellites. So basically what's happening is those effects are warming the Arctic high Arctic four, five, six times faster than the global average. So because the Arctic is warming like crazy from additional absorption of the solar radiation, it decreases the temperature difference between the Arctic and the equator. And that temperature difference is responsible for causing air to move from the equator northward. And because of the rotation of the Earth, the uh, anything moving northward will will in the northern hemisphere will be curved over to the right. So it basically and it'll increase in speed. So you get these jet streams traveling around the planet. Now as the temperature gradient decreases, those jet streams um, there's less impetus for the um, 
heat to transfer northward in both the atmosphere and the oceans. Um, the ratio is about two-thirds being carried by the atmosphere, one-third by the ocean. So as that, as that um, there's less impetus for the heat to travel northward, so there's less movement northward, so the jet streams slow down and become very, very wavy and cause these, and then, and then they depend, their location depends more on the contrast between the land and the ocean. Um, and they get stuck in these patterns causing, um, and we're getting these, um, so the storms are moving more slowly and because the average temperature is higher um, by 0.8 degrees, by which is uh, 0.5 of which is in the last 30 years or so, there's a lot more water vapor in the atmosphere. Warmer oceans, more evaporation, a lot more water vapor, and that water vapor is fueling intense storms. Um, so um, what we're seeing, so I can explain the global, the circulation patterns which, um, which the weather relies on. I mean, we're seeing very unusual weather events. I mean, Vietnam is 15 degrees latitude north, and we just had snow in Vietnam, right down to 15 degrees north. You know, it's approaching the equator. Uh, we also had um, massive snow events in Cairo, um, in Egypt, northern Egypt, uh, including Cairo, and also in Syria. You know, you've probably seen images of the Syrian uh, refugee camps uh, covered in snow. Um, so why is all this happening? Um, and to, to explain this, I'm going to zoom you in on my images of the GFS forecast. So basically, this one here, what we have here is this is the temperature anomaly. So this is the temperature difference from the norm, um, and this is the jet stream winds. So the temperature scale, we have 20 degrees, plus 20 degrees Celsius, minus 20 degrees Celsius. And each time the image cycles, we're looking down on the North Pole. So this is the North Pole in here. Um, you can see Greenland here. Um, and each time the image moves, that's three hours passing in the model. So the model starts on the 17th and runs through. Um, these are the universal time um, coordinate times and the dates. So what you can see happening, um, first of all, with the anomaly, um, you can see 20 degrees Celsius plus anomalies crossing across, right, going right across the Arctic, occupying very large areas of the Arctic. You can see 20 degree negative Celsius negative anomalies across North America, sweeping across North America like this. And what you can see is, I mean, it's being chased out here by warmer air and then chased out, the cold air chases the warmer air. So we're getting these temperature swings, uh, low temperatures, higher temperatures, low temperatures. But this area here in North America and this area up here in um, Asia are the coldest areas on the, uh, the coldest temperature anomalies on the planet. And you can see these massive warm temperature anomalies here. So this starts again at the 17th. I mean, look at this vast area of plus 20 degree anomaly going right through the Arctic. So if you look at the um, National Snow and Ice Data Cem Center Arctic extent, what you can see is, yes, the ice is growing now, but then you get these stalling trends and they can be, you can relate those stalling trends to this warm area, area, area here. So what's happening with the jet streams? Well, the jet streams are very fractured, right? There's big gaps, there's chunks flying off, um, and it's very, very fractured. So what happened is, is because the movement of air from the equator to the North Pole has decreased, the jets got wavier, and then they got so wavier that actually chunks break right off. And this is very interesting. You can see there's a chunk here that's breaking off, and it actually moves in over the North over the uh, Greenland, over Greenland there, over the North Pole, and look what happens, it, get caught, it gets caught here, and it starts rotating in the opposite direction to the uh, general circulation here, and then it kind of dissipates out. So you can see that, um, you know, pieces, chunks are flying off of the jet stream. This is very unusual behavior. What this is showing is that there's a tremendous mixing in the high Arctic between the hot air coming from the south and the cold air over the pole. I mean, normally you have a very, very strong 
polar vortex here and it confines the cold air. But uh, in this case, we can see that the air is um, continuously mixing. So we're getting a lot of mixing between um, very, very warm air from southern regions and very cold air from northern regions. Now, as cold air moves from the polar region southward, it's effectively causing more heat to go northward. And as heat moves from the southern regions northward, it's carrying heat directly northward. So the net effect is we're, we're, we're destroying the general circulation pattern of the northern hemisphere. Um, and we're, instead of getting a strong temperature contrast with latitude, um, it's being completely destroyed by this mixing process. And as there's more and more mixing, it smooths out the temperature more and more, and uh, it's, it's completely disrupting climate patterns in the northern hemisphere. Um, now, in terms of absolute temperatures, um, what we have here is this is the temperature of the northern hemisphere scaling um, on the same scale and same time frame as the other ones, and this is the absolute temperature. So what we're seeing here is, excuse me, let's get my image back here, get my technical people in trouble. Uh, what you're seeing here is look at this area. So this blue area and the light blue area is zero to minus 10 degrees. And then the darker blue area is minus 20 to 30. So what we're seeing is over the North Pole, uh, we're getting right here. Look at this blue area coming right over the North Pole here. Um, this is Greenland here. It's coming right across the Arctic, and it's between zero and minus 10. Meanwhile, in Canada, you know, I'm in Ottawa, you know, it's minus 20 degrees. Extending far down into the U.S., it's minus 20 degrees. So the Arctic is actually, you know, it's, it, it, the, Ar the Arctic's actually much warmer in these instances. But there's a lot of mixing, so it doesn't stay that way. Here we go again. Zero to minus 10, right up here. And down here, it's more like minus... 30 minus 40 even. So this is uh, this is completely unusual, completely messed up. Um, now, what is is it just the northern hemisphere that is doing this? No. Um, what's happening? Remember what I was saying about the overall uh, heat transfer. So because the Arctic is warming from additional absorption of the of uh, radiation. Um, it's warming by itself, so there's less need for heat to be transferred from the equator to the northern hemisphere. Um, the equator is warming a bit, actually not much. I mean, there's additional um, evaporation at the equator because it's a bit warmer. So there's more tropical, there's more um, an intensified um, uh, hydrological cycle. There's more evaporation, more vapor in the air, more rainfall events, more torrential rainfall events. Um, like I think in Laos, uh, they just had 120 centimeters of rain in the space of 24 hours. Think of that, 1.2 meters of rain in 24 hours. I mean, you know, we do expect big events, but this is, this is getting off the scale. So because there's, um, the heat has to go somewhere. It's not going up into the north, so the heat is traveling southward. Okay, so this is a view looking down on Antarctica. Okay, um, so we have Antarctica here. And uh, so this is a view looking down on it. So the heat is coming from the equator down. Now, it's, win it's, um, it's summer in the southern hemisphere, of course. It's, north it's boreal winter right now in the northern hemisphere, so it's summer. So the jets should be, um, the jets should be pretty motoring around pretty fast here. But because there's additional heat traveling um, from the equator to the southern hemisphere, as a direct result of the Arctic albedo snow, ice, snow um, terrestrial snow cover and sea ice reduction of albedo and amplification of warming, the heat has to go somewhere. It moves southward, and it should be making these, uh, these, uh, the southern annular mode, the atmospheric circulation pattern, and also the ocean current pattern, it should increase those and kind of isolate Antarctica from, from, the, um, from the rest of the planet. Um, but what's happening is, um, so, so this is why the sea ice grows in Antarctica. Because the Arctic is losing ice, there's more heat moving south, it increases the 